Hey, welcome back to Knowledge Over Grades. This is your favorite math coach, Latrell Jackson, and today we are going to be doing a multiplication word problem. We're going to do it step by step together. If you have seen my last few videos, then you know I've been talking a lot about multiplication, the definition, the rules, tricks, hand tricks, and how to multiply um, a couple different processes. In my last specific video, I talk about how to find clue words in a word problem to tell you that you need to multiply. All right. So in this video, it's going to be a multiplication word problem. And we're going to um, see, try to find those clues in the problem so that we can um, go ahead and multiply. So it kind of is cheating because we know it's going to be multiplication, but we'll be able to um, apply the rules from the last video. So if you're ready to get started, give me a thumbs, thumbs up and subscribe and tap the bell. Join the KOG club so you know when I upload my latest video and let's get started. So today we are going to be talking about STARS summer shopping trip. It is almost summertime. It's actually summertime. It's May. It's hot. <laughs> and um, STAR is venturing out to the mall wearing her mask because we are in the tail end of coronavirus. I hope everybody's out there being safe, but things are starting to open up. Quarantines are being lifted and um, hopefully we can have a good summer. So summer, so Star is out there um, doing some summer shopping, okay? Maybe she's shopping online. If you have been subscribed to me for a while, then you know that I have uploaded a video called the three-step process of solving word problems. And I also did a blog post on it if you like to read instead of watch, but I will link both of those in the description of this video. And my three-step process is step one, RRTR. You'll find out what that means in a second, but that is going to help you with your reading comprehension. Step two, scavenger hunt. Hmm. Step three, solve the strategy and purpose. Okay, so let's get started with these steps. So RRTR means read, reread, think, rewrite. That's important. Okay, so here is the question. Star is going summer clothes shopping at the mall and brings seven $20 bills. In one store, she buys two bathing suits for $14.10 each and three pairs of sunglasses for $5 each. In another store, Star buys five shirts for $7.50 each and two pairs of shorts for $13.76 each. In the last store, she buys one pair of sandals for $23. How much money does Star have left over? Okay, this is pretty pretty packed full of some uh, some serious shopping star. All right, let's reread it and think about it, okay? You got to reread it. You just read it the first time just to know what's going on. Now we need to read it again to actually put ourselves in the situation that star is in so that we can start figuring out what her problem is, okay? Star is going summer clothes shopping at the mall and brings seven $20 bills. In one store, she buys two bathing suits for $14.10 each and three pairs of sunglasses for $5 each. In another store, Star buys five shirts for $7.50 each and two pairs of shorts for $13.76 each. In the last store, she buys one pair of sandals for $23. How much money does Star have left over? Okay, nice. Okay, so our next step is to rewrite. And what does that include? Well, first thing we have to do is change the numbers to hashtags. So hashtags represent numbers, pounds. You may also um, know hashtags as. Um, two is rewrite in your own words. Three, draw a picture or diagram. And four, replace the numbers, okay? So, I have gone through and changed all the numbers to hashtags. So all of these hashtags either represent the amount of the item she bought or the price of the item purchased, okay? Um, and this is helpful because it helps you to just figure out what's going on. What is she doing instead of worrying about the number and starting to do the math in your head? Let's just 
break down the situation, okay? So let's read the whole thing um, without having the numbers, okay? Star is going summer clothes shopping at the mall and brings a certain amount of a certain type of bill, okay? In one store, she buys a certain amount of bathing suits for a certain amount of dollars each and a certain amount of pairs of sunglasses for some amount of money each, okay? In another store, Star buys uh, a certain amount of shirts for a certain amount of money each and a certain, pair, a certain amount of pairs of shorts for a certain amount of money each. In the last store, she buys a certain amount of pairs of sandals for some amount of money. Now, that pair, that helps us to see that that's only one pair. So we know that she's only buying one of those um, sand, pairs of sandals. How much money does Star have left over? Okay, so we know that Star went shopping. We know that she went shopping at the mall. We know she bought some things. What did she buy? She bought some bathing suits. She bought some sunglasses. She bought um, some shirts. She bought shorts and she bought sandals. Okay, she had some money. She was given money. Maybe her dad gave her some money, told her to go shopping. All right. We also know that she bought more than one of uh, a lot of these things. The only thing she bought one of is the sandals. Okay, and we also know she didn't get nothing for free. <laughs> All right. So usually at this step, you will write in your own words. However, I wrote this problem, so it's already in my own words. So it's kind of hard for me to change it up and make it different because I, whenever I'm reading word problems like online or in textbook, I don't really like the way it's worded. So I just choose my own word problem, make my own up, and choose that in my, my um, videos. So next time I'll try to use a workbook or a textbook um, word problem so that we can break down it in our own words. However, you can watch my other word problem videos where I broke down how to solve it and I um, broke it down in my own words. So I'll link those videos in the description if you wanna see that part, okay? But what you can do, because these aren't your words, you can break this down in your own words. It's nice to sometimes break it up in sections. Uh, that way it makes sense to you when you read it to yourself, okay? We can also see that Star went to three stores. Let's see, one store, she bought bathing suits and sunglasses. Another store, she bought the shirts and the shorts. And then the last store, she bought the sandals. So she went to three stores. And she purchased five items, bathing suits, sunglasses, um, shorts, shirts, and sandals. So five items from three stores. All right. So let's draw a picture of what's going on in this scenario. Okay. Okay. So when I am um, doing a word problem, I like to put myself in the situation. So that way I am really immersed in what's going on. So that's why drawing a picture or a diagram helps me out. And what I'm going to do is draw a, uh, a layout of the mall that Star was shopping at. Okay, so here's like the hallway. And here's like that little centerpiece where you can look down into and it's like the floor of the next level down. All right, so let's say this first store is this one forever 21 probably here's the next door h&m and then the next door oh navy um popular stores i know i shop at those stores so um she bought some stuff right she went to three stores and bought five things um well bought five categories of things so the first thing she bought was a bathing suit she bought two bathing suits and she bought sunglasses, three sunglasses. So one, two, three. Each category costs the same thing. Then in the other store, she bought shirts, right? So she bought five shirts. One, two, three, four, five. And she also bought shorts, two pairs of shorts. And then at the last store, she bought sandals, and that was it one pair of sandals okay so as you can see um we have some repeated 
uh, addition going on here. She bought bathing suits, however, they cost the same thing. So bathing suit cost plus bathing suit cost gives you two times that one cost, right? So that shows you some multiplication is there. All right, let's keep moving to the next step. Okay, so the next step is to replace the numbers. So instead of having the, um, the pounds or the hashtags, we have the numbers back in the, that place. And let's read it again and um, get familiar with how it sounds with the numbers in it. So Star is going summer clothes shopping at the mall and brings seven $20 bills. In one store, she buys two bathing suits for $14.10 each and three pairs of sunglasses for $5 each. In another store, Star buys five shirts for $7.50 each and two pairs of shorts for $13.76 each. In the last store, she buys one pair of sandals for $23. How much money does Star have left over? Okay. So next step is our scavenger hunt. And we're going to be looking for four things in our scavenger hunt. We're going to be looking for numbers. I'm going to be looking for unknowns and variables, hidden operations. So the hidden operations is what's most important in this problem because we've been talking about multiplication and we're going to be laser focusing in on words that show us that it's multiplication, okay? And then the last step is separate steps, meaning we're going to be looking for how many steps we have to take in order to get to the answer. All right, so numbers, okay? If you see the highlighted um, words, those are numbers. They're either in um, word form or number form. And it's either really gonna be, um, the word is the amount of something, and then the number is the cost for that thing, okay? Got those highlighted in blue. Now we have the unknowns, okay? So the first unknown is seven $20 bills. That's how much money she brought, but how much is that actually? <laughs> like how much money is that? Because um, she's gonna need to know how much money she has in order to know how much money she could spend, okay? And then the second unknown is how much money does Star have left over, okay? So that's after she spent her money, how much is left? Hmm. Let's keep going. We are on a hunt now for operation words. So for each, for $14 each, that is a multiplication word, remember? So um, each is, each time you get one of those bathing suits, you're paying $14.10, okay? We have for each again, for $5 each, that's for sunglasses, for $7.50 each, that's for the shirts. Um, the shorts is for $13.76 each. So she bought two pairs of shorts. Each of them is $13.76. That means multiplication, okay? And then one uh, pair of sandals for $23. So one times 23, okay? And then the last one is leftover. So leftover means subtraction left how much do you have left because you have a, an amount and something has been taken away from that amount and you have uh what's left over the difference okay so that's subtraction and now we have separate steps so there are actually more steps than are shown right here each line is that's highlighted in the pink is a step but we have more steps to take as well. So the first one says seven $20 bills. That means we have to multiply that to get the amount of money she has in total start to start with. Then buys two bathing suits for $10 each. We gotta multiply that. Um, three pairs of sunglasses for $5 each. We gotta multiply that. So that's three steps already. Buys five shirts for $7.50 each. Gotta multiply that four steps, two pairs of shorts for $13.76 each. Multiply that. Um, buys one pair of sandals for $23. We got to multiply it, but we know one time 23 is 23. And then um, how much money does Star have left over? So that's subtraction. But 
before we subtract, we first have to add up all these totals. So that's two more steps. We have to add up the total. Then we have to take that total away from the amount she had in the beginning to get the answer of how much she had left over. So that's a lot of steps. And this is the highlighted version of step four where I have um, the other colors filled in as well. So if you wanted to see it that way, I just wanted to put it in there. All right, so are you ready to solve? <laughs> Type ready in the comments if you're ready to go. I gave you all the steps we're gonna take. We got all the information we know what's going on. And now we're about to solve. Type ready in the comments if you're ready to go. Also, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up because we're about to do some work. You're gonna really understand what's going on by the time this video is over. All right, so our overall step three is to solve with strategy and purpose. So we want to be sure to pick a strategy, double check the question to make sure we answer the question right, and then label our values or numbers. And meaning, so label meaning um, dollars in this situation or in another situation would be miles or um, minutes or something like that, okay? So that's what I mean by label. And then we're gonna circle or box our answer. Just so it stands out as that's the answer right there instead of, oh, where's the answer? <laughs> out of all the work that I've done, okay? So let's pick a strategy. So I thought of a strategy that would work best and help us to stay organized. Um, as you remember in our diagram where we had the picture of the mall, we had um, the bathing suits and the sunglasses in one store, shirts and, and shorts in another store and the sandals in another store. In this step, we're going to actually draw a table and that's going to help us to keep everything organized and in the right um, space. And now since we know that we are multiplying and not adding, because really multiplication is a more efficient way of adding, um, this is going, is going to make this step a lot easier, okay? So let's draw that table. All right, so the first column is going to be item. The second column is going to be amount, meaning um, how many of those items did we purchase, of that item did we purchase, the cost of that item, and then the total um, of how much it costs to buy all of those items in that category based on the amount purchased and the cost. All right, so let's start filling it in. So the first thing was bathing suits. Bathing suits, she bought two bathing suits and they cost $14.10. She bought sunglasses and three of them, they cost $5 each. Next, she bought shirts, and they uh, she bought five of them, and they cost seven dollars and fifty cents each. And she bought shorts, two of them for thirteen dollars and seventy six cents each, and then lastly was the sandals one of them for $23. Okay, so voila, we have filled in our table and all we have to do is find the total and then the total of that. Okay, um, so two times 14, 10. Let's do that multiplication over here. 14, 10 times two, that's a two. So two times zero, we're gonna do the traditional um, standard way of doing multiplication and you can see the steps in my video before last where I did a tutorial on different sizes, and different setups, two by three, two by two, three by three, um, and all of that. So this is a four by one. <laughs> so two times zero is zero, two times one is two, two times four is eight, two times one is two, okay? Um, however many numbers are behind the decimal, that's how many numbers are behind the decimal in our answer. So two behind the decimal in our question, two behind the decimal in our answer. So the answer is $28.20 for those two bathing suits. And our sunglasses is three times $5. So three times five is 15. 
then our shirts are five times seven dollars and fifty cents so i'm gonna write that out 750 times five five times zero is zero five times five is 25 five times seven is 35 plus two is 37 okay so 3750 and then Two times our shorts is two times thirteen dollars and seventy six cents. Best to write the longer number up top. That's actually the standard way of writing it. Two times six is twelve. Carry to one. Two times seven is fourteen. Plus one is fifteen. Carry the one. Two times three is six. Plus one is seven. Two times one is two. Twenty seven fifty two. Twenty seven dollars and fifty two cents. And then one times 23 is $23. Okay, yay. So we got the totals of each category. Now we have to add up all the categories. All right, so we're adding 28, 20, and $15. So since our 15 didn't have any cents, we're just gonna put 00, 0, 0, 0. Then we got 37.50. We got $27.52 and we got 23 same situation we're going to add zero zero okay so we're adding i have this other um way of adding that is pretty cool but we're going to do it the the traditional way in this video if you want to watch that video where i add and by place value you can click the link in the the little button that's the little bar that's going to pop up in a second or you can click the link in my description Okay, so we're starting with the hundredths, hundredths place. Um, zeros plus two is just two. Two, zero, five, five, so two. Uh, I like to do my, I like to get a 10 as quick as possible. So I'm gonna add my fives. Five plus five is 10, plus two is 12. Then we carry that one over. Um, I wanna get a 10, however, can't get a 10. So I'm gonna do eight plus three, that gives me 11, plus one is 12, plus five, 12 plus five is um, 17. <laughs> and then seven plus seven is 14, so 17 plus 14 is 31. Carry over to three. And let's just add these down because we got a whole bunch of threes, twos, and ones. So three plus two is five, plus one is six, plus three is nine plus two is 11 plus two is 13. So now we just bring down our decimal. That's why we had to line everything up. So our total is $131.22. Yep, that's what I got when I did my work before. So she spent $131.22. It is easy to spend that amount of money on clothes, especially when stuff is cute and on sale. <laughs> so um now what's the next step hmm do you know what the next step is the next step since we found out what the total was um we didn't do the first step the first step was to find out how much money she had in the first place so how much money did she have in the first place she had seven twenty dollar bills so we have to multiply seven times twenty seven times twenty is $20 bills is $140. Okay, so she had $140. She just made it. She, if she got one more thing, let me see. If she had got, she could have got another pair of sh another shirt. She could have got another shirt or another pair of sunglasses if she wanted to. But Let's see how much money she had left over. So we got to take $140 and subtract $131.22 from that $140. So let's do that. $131.22. We're subtracting that. So we got to put our zeros here and let's subtract. So um, we got 0 minus 2, 0 minus 2, 0 minus 1 in the ones place. Four minus three. Okay, so when we are when we have zero minus a number, we have to borrow. Okay, so we can only we can't borrow from zero because zero is nothing. So we have to go all the way to four and borrow from four. Okay, so now ten minus two is eight. 
9 minus 2 is 7, bring down our decimal. 9 minus 1 is 8, then 3 minus 3 is 0, 1 minus 1 is 0. Okay. So, $8.78 is what Star had left over after her shopping trip. All right, so let's double check our question, make sure we answered it. The question is, how much money does Star have left over? She did all this shopping. She started out with seven $20 bills, and we know seven times 20 is $140, because seven times two is 14, so seven times 20 is 140. Check out my <laughs> um, video on m multiplication rules to help you remember so you can forget, and you, not have, you don't have to worry about it, because Dropping off that zero is going to help you a lot, and it says it won't seem like it's such a big number. Just multiply by that 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 one digit, and then put the zeros at the end. Okay, I'll link that in the description as well. And um, the question was, how much money does Star have left over after spending um, one hundred and thirty-one dollars and twenty-two cents? We had to subtract from one hundred and forty dollars, and she ended up with eight dollars and seventy-eight cents left over. Okay. Yay! Double check your answer, label your answer. Um, we labeled it as dollars and we said that that's how much she had left over. And then we boxed it. So we're done. We're good. Yay! If this made sense to you, please let me know below in the comments. If it did not make sense, let me know in the comments. And um, I will try to help you understand and make changes in my next video. If you have any tips and suggestions for more videos to come, especially word problems for me to do, go ahead and leave those in the comments. Also, what I have for you is I have a translation guide. So like I've been saying all throughout this video and in my last video, um, words that we speak actually translate to math symbols, okay? and math sentences. So it's like a, a whole language. And that's why it's important for you to know how to translate between the two so that you can do your math problems, especially your word problems, okay? And I've made this table to help you to identify what those math, sim math words are um, that we speak. So click the link in the description and you'll be able to download your very own pre-algebra translation guide so you can have this for you when you're doing your homework, keep it in your binder, um, have it when you're doing, uh, in class, and um, also share it with your, your friends. Also share this video with your friends and the last video. Like the last video was really gold because I went through just about every situation and every phrase there could be that will tell you that it's, it's multiplication in the word problem. So please check that out after you watch this video, which is almost over. Go ahead and give us a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.